on YouTube line, live for Tuesday. We are at December 28, 2021. This is going to be my last Facebook Live of the year. And I've uh, been thinking about how I can sort of spice it up, change it around a little bit, at least change locations. And I'm today uh, on my Peloton. And I want to show you, I'm, um, I'm going to just adjust the camera here a little bit, show you what I'm doing. My, one of my favorite instructors, if not my favorite instructor, is Christine Der Cole. You can see her. Let's see how we do this. Ah, hang on. Hold on. You can see her right there. Let's balance the camera. All right, so you can see. I don't know, for many of you are probably familiar with Peloton, but if you're not, I want to, you know, here's the screen we're looking at. Over left corner here is my heart rate. Um, shows my time remaining in this workout. I usually don't show that. I like to just go through it. Uh, working at about a 50% max capacity right now. Heart rate is 94. This is a very easy warm up I'm doing right here. I usually, during the course of a workout, get up to 80 or even 90%. These numbers indicate how hard I'm working, both in terms of how quickly I'm pedaling, which right now you can see I'm way, my cadence is 70, and the suggestion is 90 to 100. And then my resistance, which shows how hard I'm pressing to get there, is about midway in the range that she set for the workout. And then over here on the right, you can see our other people riding with me. And this is one of the things I really like about Peloton. And again, I don't want to make this an ad for Peloton. What I want to talk about today is what Peloton represents for me. And it's, it's what my rowing machine represented for me 15 years ago or 20 years ago. It, it's what, uh, you know, a series of a weight workout represented for me before COVID. It's an opportunity to really do something for myself. This is all about self-care. And what, what Peloton does, is similar to a gym in a way, is that it raises it a little bit to a level of a community. It's a virtual community, but I, I don't know if you can read here, but like this woman, these are the other people who are riding in this workout right now with me. Oh, and by the way, you can hear the music. Alanis Morissette, hand in pocket. I turned that down a little bit. This woman, um, one of her hashtags is breast cancer survivor. So that gives me a little bit of a sense of you know, who she is. All the people in this workout tend to be roughly around my age range. The, the breast cancer survivor, Beth Seppa, Beth Seppa La in Tavernash, Colorado, is in their 40s. And everyone else is sort of in my age range. And this kind of gives you a sense of where, I, where you are. It gives me a sense of where I am relative to sort of my peers. So I'm going to turn this around back to me now. Balance it. Okay. So... So for those of you, okay, so again, I'm not going to make this an ad about Peloton. So I'm not going to say what's the big deal about Peloton. And oh, by the way, if you're uh, Sex in the City or, and in, you know, and just like that fans, the, the TV show, the, the, the streaming TV show that just came on, Peloton played a major role in uh, one of the, in the opening episode, one of the big dramatic turns of the opening episode. But I'm not going to get into that. What I want to talk about is it's really about physical exercise. It's about self-care. It's about how, what do we do for ourselves? What do we do that is really our time and where we're just focused on us? And one of the reasons I wanted to show you Christine Der Cole is all of the, one of the things that Peloton delivers, again, this is not an ad for an exercise machine, but one of the things that, that we get, I think, out of our personal training experience is is a commitment to ourselves. And that in, in this instance, Christine Dercole really focuses on the internal journey that we're making, not just every day, but almost every minute. And she'll talk very openly about the struggle or struggles that she has between her ears. That she sees that in a lot of ways, whatever challenge she sets up for herself physically, whatever challenge she sets up for herself in the external world, the challenge between her ears is the bigger one. It is the more challenging one. And when she has tamed that challenge, and not just tamed it, but not, and, and even trained it, and I'll go even a step further from tamed to trained, to, dom to conquered it, she's amazed at what she can do physically. And so what's happening, what, what this is saying to me is that we have tremendous power and control in our lives 
but it all starts here. It all starts with how we think about ourselves. I want to talk about, for instance, in the domain of self, working in the ten domains. If I was back in my studio, I'd be able to point to you the ten domains from the Remarkable Men's Practice, which I use uh, courtesy of Paul Zelik, who created them, and the Santa Monica Men's Circle. As part of the Remarkable Men's Practice, we talk about these domains, starting with the domain of self. And in the domain of self, one of the first subdomains or characteristics of the domain of self is our worth. And just talking about our worth gives me an opportunity to talk about how powerful our minds are. Because on the one hand, our self-worth our, is our, our, or let's just say our self-domain, it's the first domain and it's the domain, it's the cornerstone of all of the other domains, health, home, money, work, creative, fun, spiritual purpose, all of those domains follow from our relationship with ourself, our perspective on ourself, how we own ourselves, how strong we are to ourselves. And in that domain of self, worth is the first key characteristic. Why? I think one of the reasons why is because our worth can be so volatile. This is something that Christine, for instance, ta is talking about, is that if we're feeling crappy, if we're feeling like we have no self-worth, if, if we feel terrible and we're telling ourselves terrible stories about ourselves, then how can we do anything else in our life? How can we really focus on our health or our home or our creativity? If we're ha how can we have fun in our lives if the message we're telling ourselves is negative? But if we're able to turn it around and we say, no, I'm not a piece of crap. I'm actually infinite. My self-worth is infinite. If that's what we can focus on, then we can conquer anything. Then we can, she's a bike racer, then we can, you know, win the bike race, even though we're totally intimidated by our competition. We can find new powers, new gears within ourselves. So that's what, that, that's, for me, that's what, a daily workout, whether it's on a Peloton or a daily walk or a jog, or tomorrow morning I'll probably go rowing, it, you know, whatever it is. And, and it, that's what it means for me. It's me to Im not just embrace my self-worth, but to, to make a statement that I'm worth it. I'm worth giving myself this time. I wanna be honest. When I get up in the morning, the last thing, first of all, the last thing I wanna do is get out of bed. The last thing I want to do is put on my shoes and go outside if it's cold and go for a three mile or a five mile, or if I've been, you know, when I was training for the marathon, uh, you know, an eight mile run. That's the very last thing I want to do. There are times when I've been going to the boathouse, and I probably have talked about this in other Facebook Lives, I'll get there and I'll be like, okay, just get out of your car. And I'll be carrying my boat down to the water and I'll say, all you got to do is put the boat in the water and then get in it, and then, you know, and then just take it over from there. So if I had to graph my mental state in the morning, it goes from like sub-zero, <laughs> and, and, and if I push myself, if I, if, I just, if I just don't quit, if I just say I'm going to just do the next indicated action, I can see that my, my sort of attitude in the morning is, is kind of like a slowly rising hill. And then at a certain point, maybe it goes a little more asymptotic. It goes a little more steeply, the, the slope of that hill. And I really start to get into it because by the time I'm, you know, halfway into my, my workout, then I'm really into it. Then I'm really challenging myself. Then I'm really seeing like when I showed, excuse me, when I showed you my heart rate before and it was 54%, then I'm getting my heart rate up to 80 or 90% of my max, you know, and I'm, and, you know, and I'm really struggling for, to breathe and, and I'm really pushing myself. I get myself to that place. I always seem to be able to end up there, but it, I don't start there and I don't always get there easily. That's what I want to talk about today. I want to just sort of spotlight that experience for you and for me and say that I guess ultimately that's okay. You know, it, it is what it takes. 
and, and then, you know, I guess, and then the last <laughs> The other thing I want to talk about is the little games that I play in my head while I'm, while I'm working out. You know, when I, um, on the Peloton, I showed you those two controls that are, contro that where I see the cadence, how fast my legs are going around on the pedals, and resistance, how hard I have to push to get to that speed. The harder I have to push, the higher the resistance, the more I'm actually outputting more energy. And I play this game with myself. It's, it's not an intentional game. It kind of, it's more subconscious. I imagine myself, I'm back in college. This is a, it, you know, this is a, a, a test. Like when we were on the rowing machine in college, we'd have rowing tests. We'd have to row 500 meters or 1,000 meters or 2,000 meters or 5,000 meters for time. And we'd be ranked, you know, uh, best rower, worst rower, middle, middle of the pack, whatever. We didn't have Peloton. We didn't have the, the kind of, there's actually a uh, monitor on the rower today that is dramatically advanced from what it was. When, when I was on the rower, it was basically one of those old style bicycle speedometers that just told you 30 miles per hour, 40 miles per hour. And it had a, uh, an odometer that told, told you how many meters, I think it was in meters, how many meters you were rowing. And it would just spin, you know, one meter, two meter, three meters as you rode. That was it. You know, today we go to the Peloton and my heart rate is being monitored and I can hear music through the machine and I can see other people, right? We have this whole virtual world that's created. So I imagine the game I play with myself is I, I imagine I'm on a crew team and the coach is able to look at my numbers as I progress through the workout. So he can see when I'm falling behind the cadence that the that the trainer has called for. When my, when my uh, resistance is not middle of the range, but it's at the bottom of the range. <laughs> and he can see that when I'm at 80% or 90% heart rate, because all of this, all of these data are tracked by the Peloton software, you know, he can see where I am at any point. And he can see whether I'm falling behind the rest of the team, or I'm in the middle of the pack of the rest of the team, or I'm leading the rest of the team. And I think the hardest thing to admit about myself is that I'm always convinced I'm in the middle or the back of the pack. I never, it's very hard for me to imagine I might be leading the pack. And why that matters, because it has nothing to do with the reality, whether I would really be the quote leader on the team or not. It has to do with my self-worth, right? I'm going to bring it right back to where I started this, the, the meat of this conversation this morning. It's how do I see myself? And I, and I think that the, the place to, I'm going to conclude today is work in progress. I'm a work in progress. I think you're a work in progress. We're all works in progress. And I can make advances and I can see myself and I can say to myself, hey, Mark, you're pretending like you're 20 years old on the college crew team and you've got to please the coach. You know, what's that game about? How about being a 58-year-old man who's got a wife and three kids and, you know, a whole life and a career and... Uh, you know, where you are on a, on a physical exercise machine is just a small piece of it. And like Christine says, uh, Christine Dercole, the Peloton instructor, says it doesn't matter where you are on the leaderboard. What matters is that you're on it. And, and that's what it's about. It doesn't matter where I am in the morning on that slope getting up to, you know, feeling great about my workout and really throwing myself into it. What matters is that I'm on the slope that I'm out there, that I'm doing the thing. I'm not sitting back. I'm not giving up. That's what I want to leave you with today. I'm not giving up. I'm moving forward every day. I know you are too. Tell me about what you're doing. Like my, like the video, this, this uh, YouTube and Facebook Live if you do. Uh, definitely subscribe. Friend me on Facebook and Mark Rothman Progress Coach and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Mark Rothman Progress Coach. Have a fabulous beginning of the new year. And next Tuesday, let's talk about what we want out of our 2022. Thanks so much for being with me. I'll see you next Tuesday.